Hi, it's Dwyer. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. It's July 31st, 2024. Let's talk boxing. Let's talk pit bull. Isaac Cruz against Jose Valenzuela. But first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, viewers here know I consider Israel Madrimov, who's fighting Terence Crawford, to be offensively blessed. Right? He's offensively blessed. He can throw hard punches with both hands. He can do things a lot of guys can't do. He can throw punches from distance. Right? Madrimov is defensively challenged. Right? This is a guy who drops his hands, who thinks his offense is too much for you. That's really Crawford's opportunity in the fight. Madrimov's inconsistent, we'll call it, defense. Well, there's another fight. Whoever the matchmaker was did, did a lot of good things here with this card. You have another guy who was offensively blessed. And that's Jose Valenzuela. I know he's lost two fights out of his last three. Right, but understand, this is the guy who comes in, he hits harder than you think, he has hand speed, he can take you out with either hand, he can throw a variety of punches. Even in the De Los Santos fight, where he gets knocked out, that's his one uh, knockout loss in his career. Right, lost another fight too, but he only lost one by knockout. You can see there against De Los Santos, who himself is offensively blessed. You can see there that Valenzuela has a lot of firepower. And it's interesting because he's a tall, slender guy. He doesn't look like, you know, a big-time weightlifter. This guy looks like he's straight out of the club and he's into the ring. Then you realize the guy has offensive skills. But as is often the case, Right? Just like Madrimov, Valenzuela is inconsistent defensively. What I've found is that, you know, in boxing they say great punchers are born. They're not made. You always hear that slogan, right? Let me add something different here. I believe great defensive fighters are born. They're not made. In other words, um, the great defensive fighter is like the great defensive basketball player. You can look at guys straight out of college. I'm not saying the guy has his defensive skills honed to where he's as good as he's going to be when he first hits the court. I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying is you can spot the guys who prioritize defense. However dominant a scorer they are, right? Kobe, Jordan, however dominant the scorer side of the ledger is with them, Jerry West, these guys just can't let themselves be lackadaisical defensively. Now, I hate to say it, I know he's in his early 20s, but Valenzuela is never going to be defensively blessed. He's just not, right? Because he's a guy who comes in the pocket, he's throwing heavy leather. It, it just hasn't dawned on him that an opponent might be there ready to counter him, that an opponent might be studying the angles of his punches. I'm telling you it's a different sport if you're in a defense. An opponent might be studying the angles of the punches, that explosive hook. An opponent might say, hey, if I stand over here, that hook can't hit me. And he's wide open for my counter. Right? That's not the way Valenzuela thinks. Now, he's in against a guy, Pitbull, who's dangerous. 
right? This is one of the best nicknames in boxing. It fits the fighter, right? Pitbull comes in at angles. This is an angles guy, right? Pitbull rarely just comes straight at you. No, this is the guy who comes in at angles and it's deeper than that, right? This is the guy who doesn't look where he's punching. In other words, he comes in, he's thought of the angle. He's thought of the timing. And when he comes in, you could be staring at his face. You don't know exactly what he's going to throw. Right? I know the Devontae Davis crowd wants to believe that Davis was injured. That Davis was not prepared for Pitbull. Right? And that Pitbull surprised him different opponent than Davis was expecting. Davis didn't take the fight seriously. Davis ends up in one of the toughest fights of his career. I'm just telling you, Pitbull is an advanced fighter. He would give Gravante Davis a tough night any night the two guys fight. Because Pitbull's mindset is to not be intimidated. So Pitbull, I believe studies film, I think he knows he's fighting a offensively blessed young guy who's a bit too bold, who doesn't understand that boxing requires positive energy and negative energy, that defense is part of the game, right? That's, that's the long and short of it. So the bet I like here Right? And understand, Pitbull has never been stopped in a fight. He has a couple of losses, but he's never been stopped in a fight. Valenzuela has only been stopped once. But I look at these two guys, they're both dangerous. Pitbull has a bunch of early knockouts. Right? You show up, he's a shorter guy than you think. He's hard to read, he's hitting you with tough shots, he's timing you. He can be a lead or a counter, he's switching it up in the middle of the fight. You don't know whether he's coming or going. Then he comes up on your side. Pitbull will even walk behind you. So you're turning. You're not ready. Right? That dynamic is going up against a young guy who's a blessed puncher. A young guy who jumps in the pocket and thinks he's going to get a knockout before he has to leave the pocket. Right? A young guy who is so confident that he's getting hit with bombs by De Los Santos. And he doesn't even know how to clinch De Los Santos. I have the video in my favorites folder. He doesn't know how to clinch De Los Santos. The referee is telling him, look man, player, you, you can't be getting hit like that and not think I'm going to stop the fight. The ref's talking to him. And the guy just does not have a clue on how to cover up, how to, you know, waste time, um, how to get to the end of the round. The bet I like in this fight, and I think it's reasonably priced. I know it sounds ridiculous. It's a minus 197. Is that the fight doesn't go the distance. Right? I'm expecting heavy shots to be landed by both guys. Right? I know Valenzuela doesn't really know how to back up and cover up. Besides, if you try to clinch Pitbull, who knows how to fight low and is already short, you might not be able to clinch him. Right? So I like the under here. Minus 197. Not the under, but the fight doesn't go the distance prop. So you get all the rounds. At a minus 197. But I need for people to understand the risk involved. The minute you get to the end of the last round. And the fight goes to the scorecards. You've lost it all. Right? Just food for thought. Understand too. Pitbull did go the distance. Against Gravante Davis. Right? Davis went the distance against Pitbull. But I would argue that the guys who are able to go the distance against these guys are high-level fighters. 
right? And here you have a defensively challenged Valenzuela. He's great offensively, but he is not great defensively. And you have a skilled fighter who is figuring things out and making adjustments as the fight goes forward in Pitbull. Right? I think somebody is going to get stopped. I do believe Valenzuela, being offensively blessed, is a live dog against anybody he faces. Right? Because understand, these offensively blessed guys you know if if they can just catch you before you counter them they're gonna have the upper hand right there is a possibility that Pitbull who's never been stopped gets hit by heavy artillery from Valenzuela early and then never recovers right the fight becomes one where Valenzuela doesn't have to worry about his defense because Pitbull is covering up the fight could also be one where Pitbull shows up, says this kid has no defense, waits for the opportunity, is too low and is too slippery, right? So he's bobbing and weaving, some shots fly over his head. He's just waiting for his opponent to, you know, throw a left hand that misses so he can come in and throw the counter he's already practiced in practice. I'm expecting a stoppage here. You're getting a minus 197. They're telling you that this happens two times out of three if these guys fight. I think that's a bargain. I think it happens more than that. I'm not going to pick a winner. Instead, what I'm going to do here is to just pick the under. Not the under. Sorry, the fight doesn't go the distance prop. Let me hear from you. Those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours in the comment section of this YouTube video. Pitbull, by the way, personal favorite. He's a guy who, as highly thought of as he is, is better than advertised, right? You know, we don't consider him to be in the Gervonta Davis, Shakur Stevenson race for some reason, right? Folks, the guy went the distance with Gervonta Davis that was a close fight, right? Understand, boxing is really a possession sport. If I'm the favorite when we enter the ring, the crowd, the judges are going to view the fight differently than if I'm an unknown underdog, which is who Pitbull was when he fought Gervonta Davis, right? Look at that same fight today. Then ask yourself, who won the fight, right? Let's just say Frank Martin, against Gervonta Davis, and Leo Santa Cruz against Gervonta Davis, Ryan Garcia against Gervonta Davis, none of them looked as good as Isaac Cruz did. I don't think this fight goes the distance. Let me hear from you. I look forward to your comments. Thanks for stopping by.